page number 11. I'm glad to be in church today. Praise the Lord for you. Amen. Good place to come worship him. I hope you had a good night for us. And thank you for God to do something. Amen. Page number 11. My name is in the book of life. Oh, bless.
uh, good fellowship get today around here at the Harbor and thank God for the yes, chance. But we go to, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer in just a minute. But grateful to be here. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for these folks, a lot of folks today. This heat wave coming through. A lot of folks are really having a lot of hard time trying to stay cool. A lot of the elderly, some of them have air conditioning. Let's pray for them. They said in Japan, the worst heat, worst heat wave has been hit there in 150 years. Mm -hmm. And said that if, if their power grid goes out, there's going to be thousands that's going to die because they ain't got no air conditioning. Especially the elderly people. So you pray, pray that God allows you. Know, God allows it. And yeah. well, let's pray for those who can't help but have compassion for them. Well, we're going to other things we need to remember. Uh, continue to remember my nephew and niece. Uh, both of them, uh, one of them had surgery Thursday. Uh, Scotty had surgery on his neck. He had to do two discs, replace three discs and something in his neck. And pray for him. He's done good, but he got a long recovery. And my niece, Kara, had, had to go in and get some more cancer out of her. Uh, they didn't get all that cancer out. You pray for her. Uh, continue to remember these other sick. Pray for Brother Jason Frank's son. Uh, he's not hardly got, got no use of his body at all. It's, it's sad. Can't even sit up in a chair, can't talk, can't eat, can't dress himself, can't take care of himself in the restroom or nothing. But pray for him that somehow, some way, God has got to give him wisdom and God to touch him. Pray for them. And pray for Brother Johnny Stanley. Hadn't heard nothing from him lately. Pray for him. Pray for my friend in the mountain, Brother Kenny Bay. He got esophageal cancer. But pray for these others. My sister in law, Barbara, they were going to do a biopsy on her. Uh, do a biopsy on a Friday, and uh, when they found out that she hadn't had a heart, seen the heart doctor in two years, they wouldn't do it because they were afraid if they tried to put her in anesthesia, she'd have a heart attack, and they wanted to make it get them to clear her for that before they could do that. But pray for her. Let's pray for these others today uh, that are lost. Pray for some that's, that the devil's really. Really gave them, a, really gave them a bad deal with. They really listened to the Satan. Yep. Now they're not even in church because they think. You know yep. what's so bad? Yep. A lot of these folks is out of church, ain't serving God. Yeah. And you talk to them, they might be God. Yeah. Amen. You ever heard? You ever been like that before? Amen. Let's pray for them. I don't want to pray to be so that's not my place to do that. My prayer for them. Just pray God in prayer for every person. Amen. 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 Let's pray for. Let's pray for the service today. Remember yes. me. I've got to go uh, Wednesday to the urologist in Pinehurst and pray that it'll work out good. You remember us and I got peace, whatever God wants, that's what he's going to do. But pray for me. I appreciate that. Appreciate you praying for me about my knee. They gave me a shot of water <coughs> on my knee. A whole lot better, a whole lot less, a whole lot less pain. I thank God for that. But we're going to go a little bit of prayer at this time. And so many pray for Grace. She's not here today. She's Still having a lot of problems. Pray for her, Grace Smith, and these others. But remember Peyton that God will deal with us. She'll be back in church with us. And all these others, I tell you, a lot of folk, you'll see it today. The Bible just said in the last days, uh, you know, people are going to fall from the faith. They're going to fall. It's going to be a great fall of the way. It's here. Yeah. It's here. Amen. Amen. And I believe it's been more evident since COVID hit than it's ever been. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Like I said a while ago, uh, uh, it's all right to have live streaming. That's great. And we have it on the YouTube channel. They can go and watch it on YouTube. It's not live. But I think a lot of times people have gotten used to sitting in their pajamas, watching these on TV and all, yeah. but they don't want to go back to church. Amen. Yeah. So I tell you what, we pray. Pray for those. But pray for the service today. today. Pray for these requests. And yes. Yeah, I've already spoken with Chris today. Mm -hmm. Lift your hand. We're going to go, Lord, in prayer and ask God to bless the service today. Pray the Lord to help us in a special way. As we go, Lord, in prayer, let's stand where our mic's going to listen to the song. And then we're going to go on into the service at this time. Uh, amen. Amen. Brother Jason, lead us, Lord, in prayer. Bless the Lord. Dear Lord, we thank God. He blesses, Lord, in prayer. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, yes. Lord, yes. Lord, let's pray for all these requests this morning, dear Lord. All the ones that are sick and having the service, all the way. Pray for the other Lord. And Lord, our, our lost loved ones this morning, Lord, I pray for them, Lord. Yes. It's out of church, so yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I pray for them, Lord, I pray for them, Lord, I pray for Lord, I pray for them, Lord, I pray for this service this yes. morning, Lord, I pray for this, bless the preacher this morning, and bring your message to us, yes. dear Lord, yes. Lord, yes. Lord, 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 L
We just thank you and praise you. Just in precious name, man. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Would please turn to page 225. Page 225. There shall be shower of blessings. We'll do the first, the last verse. Page 225. He's going. <clears throat> there shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sing from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drop round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now when to God we confessing. Now as old Jesus we call. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drop round us our folly. But for the showers we bleed. Tonight, five o'clock, be here and thank the Lord and thank God for our independence. Yes. God give us a be able to come yeah. and be in a country we can worship the Lord. Yes, Lord. We'll take it for granted. Get that right. on Sunday morning, drive it here. Don't worry about no military coming in. Mm -hmm. Now we don't, but I don't know how we would be down the road. But yeah. we thank God for letting us be able to uh, be here and thank God for you being here. Uh, I'm on the same one. I'm gonna let brother. Uh, we'll get the ladies to sing one this morning if they would. Thank you, God, we're living in, living in a, good, a blessed country today. Yes. I'm glad that you say, well, preacher, it ain't what you should be. It's still the best country yes, on earth. Yes, it is. Right. I'm glad I was born in America. Amen. I'm glad I'm Amen. American. I'm glad I am. But I'm most of all glad I'm saved. Born again, Amen. Right, child of God. Right. Thank God for that today. Yes, bless him. When he moves among us, all that he does, all of his mercy, all of his love. If the pen of the writer could write every day, even this world could never contain how I have been blessed. Warmth in the winter, flowers in spring, Laughter at summer, the changing of leaves, Man. food on my table, and a good place to sleep, yes. clothes on my back, and shoes on my feet, I have been blessed. Yeah. I have been blessed, yeah. God's so good to oh, me, yeah. precious are yeah. his right. thoughts of right. you and me. Oh. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. Amen. So I'll just thank him for uh -huh. being so kind. Yes. God has been good. Yes. So good. <coughs> I have been blessed. Amen. Arm that will raise. Yes. A voice that can talk. Amen. And that can touch. Legs that can walk, yeah. ears that can listen, eyes that can see, I've got to praise Him as long as I breathe, yeah. I have been blessed. <clears throat> A mother and father who nurtured and raised, sisters and brothers, memories made, our pastor to lead us, this altar to pray, strike that, that can heal, the blood that still saves. I have been blessed. I have been blessed. God is so good to me. Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. I just want to thank Him who being so kind, Amen. God has been good, so good, I have been blessed. Amen. We live in a country, the greatest on earth, Amen. where the flag stands for freedom. 
freedom yes. and what it is worth. She stands in the harbor yes. and it's liberty yes, calls. All mm -hmm. had given some, but some gave it all for me to be blessed. Yes. He's my shoulder to lean on. Uh -huh. yes, yeah. When I am down, yeah. the rock where he leads me, when I'm overwhelmed, yes. the place where he hides me yep. under his yeah. wings. Oh. He's not just a song, he's a reason I sing. I have been blessed. I have been blessed. God's so good to me. Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. I just want to thank Him for being so kind. God has been good. So good. I have been blessed. God has been good. So good. Yes. I have been blessed. Amen. Amen. Y'all ladies come. Bless Sing. Lord. Glad I'm blessed this morning. Yes. yes. Amen. Blessed beyond measure. Yes. Every day God's been good, He's good to us all. Amen.
Yeah. I'm glad I'm here to this place. Yes. Yes. Glad I'm a citizen of two two worlds. Yes, sir. Right. Come on. Amen. Amen. Mm. I'm glad I'm here to that place. I hope Amen. today you can say that to be true uh, for you. Oh, and look at Second Samuel today, if you would. Second Samuel chapter 15. Second Samuel, I'm sorry, Second Samuel 21, I'm sorry. Second Samuel 21, verse 1. We're going to begin Second Samuel 21, verses number 15. You can find the place we're going to read. Moreover, the Philistines had given war again with Israel, and David went down, and he served with him, and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. And Ishbenah, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shackles of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, succored him, and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt, no, shalt, thou shalt go no more out the battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was yet a battle with the Philistines at Gog, and, and then uh, Sebachai, the, the Hushatite, slew Sam, which was the son of the giant. And there was again a battle in, in Gog with the Philistines with El, El Hanna, the son of, uh, I can't say that word, I just amen go on with it in Bethlehem, <laughs> to the brother of Goliath, the Gilites, who, the staff of whose spear was like the weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, for the man, there was a man of great stature. They had on his every hand six fingers. And on every foot six toes, four and twenty-four, four and twenty in number, and he was also born to the giant. When he defied filed Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimei, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servant. Well, my bless if you would. Dear Miss I pray to you, Father, today, God, yes. in Jesus' name, I'm asking you, God, to bless the word of God. I'm ready to preach today, Father. Will God give him liberty? Will God is the to preach it. God, touch him in a mighty way. God, he can't do it out this morning. Yes. I pray to touch him in your sweet way, dear Lord. Help us to see what we need to see through the word of God today. Yes. We're out of seeing hearts of fear. Yes. understand. And we love you. Thank you. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. In these verses I've read this morning, we find a fundamental truth of life. <coughs> There's a simple truth today we read in these verses of Scripture here. There'll be battles, but there always will be another battle. You may win one battle, but I don't mean it's over. There's going to be another battle coming in your life. We just witnessed the greatest, one of the greatest victories of our lifetime when Roe versus Wade Amen. was abolished. Amen. 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 Now the states have their own rights or opportunity to ban abortion in their state. And I'm, I'm so sad to say our liberal governor now is not going to do that. Yeah. But we can rejoice today over the victory they had. They never would have thought. They never thought that Roe versus Wade would ever be defeated. But it would be shut down. But it had been. But we can't relax, folks. This is just one battle we faced in the one, but it's going to be more battles to come in our life. Amen. You may think the devil don't bother me much. I'm going to tell you what. He may leave a little bit, but it's coming back. Yeah. yeah. You remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed and the, the Bible said he had sweat to come and drop the blood and said the devil leaveth him what for a season? Mm -hmm. That means he left him for a while but that means he's going to stay gone. That's exactly the way it is as a child of God. And our battles 
our battles, we may win battles, and we do win battles, but always in the horizon will be a battle that's going to come in our life. And it always will be that until the Lord comes and gets us on text all. There'll always be another battle that will. I want to preach today on the simple topic of this. There was again another battle. He said, David won a great victory. But they kept hitting, the battles kept coming. You see, what's wrong with a lot of Christians today is when they get over and win a major battle in their mind, they think, hey, I've got it made. But you haven't got it made. That's right. Yeah. Because when you win one battle, there's going to be another battle coming. I don't know how soon it'll be or how late it'll be, but it'll come. <coughs> We look at the persistence in this battle in the several verses here. How it was persistent in the battle. Look at verse 15. It said, uh, The Philistines had yet war again with Israel. Look at verse, verse 15. Tell us that. It said in verse 15, Moreover, the Philistines had yet war with the, again with Israel. And David went down and he served with him and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. Verse 18 said the same thing. He said, and he came to pass after this. There was again a battle with the Philistines that God and Sabachiah, the son of Husha, uh, the Hushanite, slew Sam, which was of the son of the giant. Verse 19 tells the same thing. And there was again a, again a battle in God with the Philistines, wherein El, 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 Hannah, the son of uh, whatever the name is, of Ethelman Heights, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite. Uh, the stand with whose weep, uh, spear was like a weaver's beam. Verse 20 said the same thing. There was yet a battle in Gath, where the man of great statue that had, been, had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, uh, four and twenty in number, and he also was born in the giant. So we see here the battle still keeps coming in our lives. It doesn't matter when you win a battle, that doesn't mean it's true fighting. Mm -hmm. Honey, it's going to be consistent, consistently in our lives as long as we're on this earth. Amen. But so many people today that used to stand in the pews of the Union Baptist Church, they face trials in their life and battles in their life. And God gave some so many victories. But another's come and it kind of knocked them out of the way. The Lord did not ever say living for Him would be a, be a smooth road. There's going to be battles in their life. They are. It don't matter how many battles you fought. There's going to be another one coming down the road, brother. Amen. Amen. Yes. There'll never be a day when we'll be, we'll sit down and retire from the battle until we get home yeah. to heaven. The battle will come to you. The Bible said in verse 15, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. Remember this. Goliath was killed, right? But Goliath has family too. Yeah. When they killed Goliath, the that didn't put the end to the battle because he had family to come against them. And we see here today, yeah, because you kill a Goliath in your life, folks, that don't mean that battle's going to be over. That don't mean you're not going to face adversity, persecution, and heartache, and heartbreak, tears, and fears, and agony, and sometimes fear of defeat. And we see here the we see here the will of the giant. They thought, the Bible says in verse 16, if you look at this, they thought to have slain David. The giant had one thought, and hey, listen to me this morning. The liar, the giant had one thought in mind for every one of us today to kill us. Yeah. They don't want to wound us, they want to completely take us off the scene. And they said he had thought to kill King David here. That was the will of the giant, the devil. You know what? The giant hates you and me and what we stand for. Yeah. 
Your family, that's why you can't, a lot of times can't get along with your family members, friend. If the God is not you, they don't, you don't, they don't, they don't like, it's what you stand for, who you Amen. live for. Amen. Used to bother me when I was young. Christian, go to family get together. It seemed like when you go in, everybody stopped talking. Yeah. Yeah. And you're wondering what were they saying about me. But you know, I got worried about that. I heard all people say, hey, it's not you they don't like, it. you stand for they don't like. Yeah, they mean. And that's what we need to understand this morning, friend. Look at the weapons they had. The Bible says in verse 16, and Isha Benal, which was the side of the giant, the way to the uh, spear, weighed 300 shackles of brass and weight, being girded with a new sword, thought to slay him. He had a new weapon. Something different to go against Israel with. Let me tell you, the devil will always be pulling new weapon out of his arsenal to attack you. He'll make that family member get in the way to hinder you from serving God. He'll go, he'll come to you in discouragement. He'll come to you in that co-worker. But he always got a trick up his, trick up his sleeve. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what we see here. He was girded with that new sword. He'll always be pulling out that new weapon to try to get out of his arsenal. We preach just finished up a series of messages on Wednesday night about the arsenal of the Christian. But the Satan has that arsenal too. He uses. But see, David, he fought the battles. But in one battle, one right after another, he fought. <clears throat> People got a wrong idea, and they got a, a misconceit about what serving the Lord is. It ain't always glory to God all the time. It ain't always jumping and jumping and praying. It ain't always go smoothly, friend. But when the devil comes, he'll come, he'll come, and he'll, he'll attack you just like he always does when you just come through a victory. Mm -hmm. Just like in revival meeting, brother. God sent the revival, uh, we have a revival meeting at Unity Baptist Church, and what's so bad about it most times the next seven to two is dead at four o'clock in the morning. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you see, the devil. He don't play fair, folks. Look how weird this giant was. Bible said he had six fingers on his head and six toes on his feet. That guy's got some big feet, didn't he, man? <laughs> <laughs> but the weirdness of the giant, we'll see things, listen, you have in your lifetime. I have saw some. Have seen things in our battles we never have saw before. Yeah. We've seen some weird ways of the devil trying to attack us, friend. Those things that are unnatural, abnormal things that have never been seen. That's why it is really important to be to be prepared to fight. How do you prepare? For by praying and by Attending God's house, hearing the word of God, fellowship with God's people, reading the word of God and praying, that's how we prepare. Yeah. Those folks that don't prepare, those that don't stay true to the things of God, don't read the Bible, come to church, and be faithful, they're not prepared for the battle that comes their way. Amen. And then when the battle does come and they get messed up, they start blaming God for it. See, David, it was a rarity. I've never seen a Bible with six fingers and get it happen. Or six toes when he took down. But the weird, it was the weirdness of the giant, you see. Whether we like it or not, I don't like no battles. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I, want, I love the battles. No, I don't. But regardless whether I like it or you like it or not, they're still coming. Yeah. So many people tonight, my friend, are swimming, my folks. They are now sitting at home or somewhere today. Instead of being in church, 
because they were not prepared for the battle, they succumbed to the temptation of the battle, and now they completely disqualify themselves because they out of the will of God. Yeah. yeah. We see here this. First of all, we see the battle. We see what the persistence of the battle. But we also want to see the pressure of the battle. It's hard to go through battles, so folks. It's hard. It, it puts a lot of pressure on people, folks. Great pressure. You just want to hear what I say about David. Verse 15 says, last part of 15 said, David waxed faint. In other words, David was a man. He was much of a man. He was a warrior and a fighter. But when a person constantly is in a battle for you, don't care how strong in the, God, in the faith you are, there will be so much pressure on you that you'll wax faint. Oh yeah, David messed up. He sure did. But the Bible says that battle was so consistent. It was a daily battle. <laughs> but man, he didn't get tired of doing his best, but he didn't really not get, he probably got wore out. I heard man say years ago, he's not tired of the battle, he's tired in the battle. And that's true. Mm -hmm. We get tired sometimes of trying to serve God and trying to seem like sometimes the devil makes us feel like so I expect us to feel like that, hey, we're, we're in it alone. And you get, we're constantly, constantly barraging battles. That's exhausting, friend. There's nothing no more exhausting than being spiritually just exhausted. Worn out. Pray. See, my prayers are not answered. See, my, when we try to live the Lord, the more we do, the more the devil fights, the more things fall apart in our life, don't it? Yeah. That's exhausting it at, at, day by day, every single day. There ain't no way to break a vacation. How about he's fighting on a vacation? He was just war and fighting nonstop. David suffered a lot of emotional stress. You see people that you love. I've seen people that I love so much. I see them at home. I see them at the store. I see them around. That I knew used to serve the Lord. But they that they don't have no knowledge of God. They don't want to come to church. And it bothers me. It's emotional. When you remember how that God had blessed those folks so great. Yeah. And now you... And here's what I thought this morning. Get ready to come to church. Some people that are set to save the other church, they live as though they've never known the grace of God. That's what bothers. And if it bothers me, who's a fleshy human being, you know how much it bothers God who's holy and perfect. There's a lot of things going on with David. It would have be, been enough to stop most people. What caused him to be devastated, folks? What caused King David to be devastated in that? First of all, there's a devastating famine here. And 1 Samuel 21, 1 said there was a famine in the days of David. Three years, year after year, David inquired the Lord. For three years, <coughs> a famine. No food, no water, no shortage of food, no water. Isn't it something we look at America today how a lot of these folks are having problems supplying the need for people, even the food and everything, parks and stuff. We see it in our land. But David was devastated. He had so much weariness because him being uh, him being the king, being in over the country, we see here it was a famine. There was a famine that David inquired of God. He wondered, Lord, what are you going to do? Why is it going to happen? Why am I, why are we going to do this? Have you ever asked God that? Have you ever asked God that? Lord, I'm 
serving you. I come to church, Lord. I pay my due, my tithe, and my offering. And God, I pray. But Lord, why aren't these things happen to me when I'm trying to be so faithful to you? It's an emotional thing in a person's life. This famine, this famine, when it discouraged David and the one of man. And what we bothers you, it probably bothers David, it probably bothers you, it bothers me too. Even though people knew what the solution is to get to hear from heaven, they don't use that solution. They were disappointed <coughs> things in your life. I've been disappointed many times. I failed God and, and I wonder why God, why I'm so disappointed in myself. And it was so much failure, he became weary. You know what he said in Second in, in, in Samuel 21, 1, he said this, and the Lord answered, it is for Saul when he bloody half because he couldn't get him. Here's what he was saying. He said, David was dealing with his family because God was judging them for the past mistakes of the previous administration, Saul's administration. You see that Gideon actually had made a pact with Israel <coughs> and Joshua now to escape the destruction. And Israel was bound to keep that covenant with his people. But the Bible says, in verse 1, it says here that Saul slew the Gibeonites he had forsaken and broke the covenant that God they had made with the Gibeonites and I won't destroy you. And now Saul had turned on the Gibeonites and destroyed. Now God was judging Israel for the disobedience of Saul. And God judged America today for the disobedience of people in high places. Amen. Amen. We're living in a day, I know we're still living in a good country. I love Amen. America. Amen. That flag does something to me when I see it all the time. All the men and women have fought and defended our honor. Yes. Honey, I'll tell you what, when God sends a family and God sends judgment, there's some, somebody and somewhere that's responsible for all that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And God was judging Israel because Saul went against the covenant made him to give you night to not destroy them. <coughs> he was judging Israel for God was the disobedience of Saul. A lot of times, folks, this is true. We wax faint and we look to see people that fail, the failure and disobedience of folks that we once had a lot of confidence in, Brother Mike. Amen. I know some of you have friends, a Christian friend, that you used to thank a lot of them. You see them far by the wayside. Some that you some that you would look at as a mentor or someone an example, but then they turn their back and it discouraged you. <laughs> we'll discourage you. But we see here. A lot of times we'll wax train. You know what the devil tells you? You see somebody you have a lot of confidence in. I've had a proud brother Mike that I love so much and preach your friends and men that I thought, hey, if anybody's going to stay out of stuff, it's going to be me. Yeah. But they get you tripped up with a woman or finances or something. Yep. And it makes me just say, say, Lord, have mercy. Why in the world, and some of these younger Christians, they look up to some men and women that they love so much and being so dear to their heart. And they fail them and they, they fall short and they fail you to these people. Them young people are fine. Look at them. Young Christians are looking at these people and they'll get discouraged and they get out of the way. Yeah. Amen, Bruce. Because they say, well, if they, if they don't mess up, you know what the, the, mental, mental, the mental part of it. They say, if they mess up as much as close as they want with God, I ain't got no chance for sin. That's the problem. 
We sow the seed of disobedience. I've had preacher friends, but Brother Mike has turned bad. Yeah. That, that, was, that was nothing what I thought they were. And I felt so guilty. But God said it's not your fault. Every man is drawn away by his own lust. Amen. Every man. Amen. So we see here, seeing people around you that you know better doing the wrong thing is exhausted mentally and spiritually. They say, I'm both, both, I would like to grab and shake and cross eyed. <laughs> but what good would it do? It discourages you. You love people. You encourage people. You're there for them. You pray with them. You're there to help them when they're sick. Pray for them in the hospital. And do everything. And all of a sudden, they it goes to clock. Yeah. That's discouraging, folks. Yeah. It is. That's the way, that's the way of life, too. There's going to be pressure on all of us. They all. Look at this, too. Verses 8 through 14, I won't, I'll read it, but it's the more life in funeral. It was. The Bible says in verse 8, said, But the king took to serve the rich brother's daughter of Ai, who she bore in the salt, Amana, and Mephibosheth, the five sons of met the child, the, the daughter of Saul, who she, who she brought up for Ere, the son of Bozeli, the Meholite, and David had, David had just burned seven innocent men. He even had to go and retrieve the bones of Saul and Jonathan and bury them. There's nothing more taxing on folks. There's nothing that bothers me so much as to see those folks, Brother Philip, that I love, I care for, falling in battle. When I see someone quit, quit on God and get out of touch, fall into sin and turn, turn the world. You know what? It makes us all sad. It makes us feel sad. And you can almost hear in the, in the background Satan laughter. Yeah. What do you do, preacher? Just keep doing what you've been doing. Because <coughs> these battles are going to come. The consistency to the battle is not going to let up, my friend. But I'm wondering one good thing that I'm looking at. Here's a good bright side. We're going to go from gloom to glitter now, okay? We see the partners in the battle. I like this. Look at verse 17. <clears throat> Get right page here. Verse 17 says that Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, so suffered him and smote the Philistine and killed him. And then the men of David swore to him, saying, Thou shalt not go more out with us to battle that day. Thou quit off a lot of it. You know what the word suffer means? It means to have support and help. David, David had somebody <laughs> in the battle. No, let me tell you, you're not fighting the battle you say by yourself. Remember that. You've got brothers and sisters all around that love you and care for you. Amen. And David had a man say, hey, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you, man. You're not by yourself. We need to understand and let folks know that are going through battles this morning. Hey, you're not by yourself. We need yeah. help. We're praying. We're lifting you up. Amen. Amen. Let's give praise to David, the devil wants us to isolate ourselves from others. You know, we're going through these battles. You don't need to isolate from them. You need to get where you can get around God's people. Yeah. Then he slew the Philistine and killed him. <coughs> In other words, oh, Abishai said he ain't going to mess with my preacher. He ain't going to mess with my king. He went and took him out. He helped him. Just, a, just the idea of knowing someone loves you enough to be there for you to help you through a lot of storms. And what's our problem is? A lot of people, it's my fault and no more. If a brother and sister are going through battles, 
Satan is telling you, you reach an error, you just let him go. And let the devil wear him out. Let the devil tie him up and spit him out. Chew him up and spit him out. When you yourself had, had the ability and the power to help them, encourage them, because let me tell you, sometimes we need people to hold our hands in the battle, friend. Yeah, amen. Amen. Instead of saying, well, you got to get to yourself. About like let the little two-year-old baby, young, and get out of the road, walk out in the, in the highway, cars coming. And that's exactly the same idea of this. Yes. I mean, so many people are Christian today, and I believe it, but a lot of them are isolating themselves from the realization, hey, we're in this thing together, and we're partners in the faith, and we need to help each other any way we can. Yeah, amen. Even you see in 1 Samuel 26, 6, <coughs> we can turn back and read and find it just a second. Hopefully, we'll find it real quick. It won't be too long to find it. But we can see here in 1 Samuel 26, 6 that Abishai was first mentioned in 1 Samuel 26, 6. And here's what he said. Let me get my Bible here and I'll show it to you. It says this. I'm sorry. But it said over here. Then answered David and said to Abimelech the Hittite and to Abishai the son of Zerahiah, the brother to Joab, saying, Who will go with me to Saul in the camp? You know what Abishai said? I'll go down with you. He don't want to look at He was willing to kill Saul to protect David. And that's it. I will tell you what, friend, look what he said in 1 Samuel 26, 7. So David and Abishai came to the people by night. Behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck at the ground, and he bolstered. But Abner and the people lay around about him. This is what Abishai said. Then Abishai said, then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thee in the, thine enemy into thy hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray. With a spear, even an earth that wanted, and I will not have to smite, I, and I will not smite him the second time. In other words, he said, I'll kill him in one stroke. All you've got to do is kill me, and I will take care of him. But David, being the man he was, he said, it's not fit to put a hand against the gods of the wind. But Abishai was there. Let me tell you, we need some Abishai's in our church tonight. We need Abishai to be encouragement and there to be able to stand with your brother and your sister who wept pain in their faith. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Let me tell you what. It was a good thing that he surrounded himself with fighters, and it's a good thing for you two to take do it. We ain't got a lot of people here. I'll tell you what, there's strength in numbers. When our brothers and sisters are down, we ought to be there for them. We need to quit worrying about our needs as much sometimes. We, whatever happened to people putting Jesus first and others second and themselves last? Whatever happened to that? Amen. That ain't like that no more. Mm -hmm. But he surrounded himself by some men with good company of people. I hate brother how men and women like we have here at church to pray. To pray for me and my valleys and my, my disappointments and my heartaches and my horrible times that I had the world's approval. Yes. That's the truth. Yes. It was a good thing David had trained these men. He trained them to care about other people and invest in other people because that was the day that he needed them. Had he not instilled that in his mind, He would have been there to help me. And the same goes for our mamas and daddies, and grandma and grandma, everything may be today. We need to teach our children to care about other people's needs. And instead of teaching them to be spoiled brats. Somebody help me. Yeah, yeah, man. We need to teach them, hey, when somebody's in trouble, you've been, you know, it used to be a long time ago. Not my age, but probably a little bit later on in the early 
1900. If an neighbor had trouble, the whole neighborhood come dead to hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. If the barn burned down, they'd have a whole neighborhood. They'd have a barn raging. They'd be able to burn. Yeah. If a man got sick and his crop couldn't get his crop, the neighbor would bring all their animals and plow, and they'd do the crop for them. And they say, do it, we'll die, and we'll starve. I just think about get back to the old time when you <coughs> Yeah, right, amen. Oh, preacher, I ain't got time. You better take time, sir. God, you're going to need time, you're going to need them, too. Yeah, yeah amen. amen. That's you, bro. I don't need nobody. You may, you may sing another song when it comes. But see, David, he invested a lot in him, and it helped him because they helped him. Because they had been done what was taught and was shown to them by the example of King David. There came a time when David, the warrior man, became a weak man. Everybody, you strong in your faith, living for God. You live for God, you strong. But there comes a big kind of time you get weak to walk with God. We don't never know what kind of circumstances are going to, going to come our way, folks. All right. You may be here tonight, today, stick your chest out, say, I'll never quit serving God. You better not say that. You better say, by the help and the grace of my Almighty God, I'm going to stay true to the Lord. Amen. 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 There came a time, instead of David rescuing other people, brother Mike, he needed to be rescued. Amen. Sometimes we all need help and need rescue another. <laughs> Been many a time, folks. I've been down and out, and there's been the right person called to come by to help me and bless my heart. Oh, King David, he had been a blessing to a lot of men. He men loved him, folks. And he was courageous and bold. But at this time, he became faint. He was a fight man, but now he's a fight man. He needed help, folks. He needed rescue. He needed rescue. He even had taught Joe, he even taught Joe to watch each other's back. In verse 9 of 2 Samuel 10 and 9 says, When Joe saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind, he chose all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians and the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai, his brother, that he may put them in array against the children of Amnon. And he said, If the Syrian be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me, but if the children of Amnon be too strong for thee, I will come help thee. Be of good courage, let us pray to men for our, for, our, for our people, and for the city of the right God and the Lord. Do that which seemeth him good. He told them, say, look, you both look at each other. This is a simple thought. You know what he was really want to hold? Whole, whole summarization of it is we need each other. Yes. I need y'all. We need each other. I need you. You need yes. We all need each other. Amen. So we can't fight this battle alone. That's right. Amen. So we can't push that battle. We can't push that wagon up the hill by ourselves. That's we right. need somebody to help. That's right. Yeah. David needs help. He was a warrior, but now he was a weak warrior. He became to be faint. Don't care how we're strong. You got some strong men, Brother Mike, Brother Phil, Brother Phil back here. That boy, Brother Jack, that boy's strong. But I hope you ain't know that. None of you are a match for Satan. You are. And I'll tell you what, you need us. We need each other, friend. Yes. Keep the battle going. Because there'll be a time in our life, there's going to be low spots in our life where we feel like we just about can't go on. We become faint if we need somebody by ourselves to lift us up and pray for us. Amen. Amen. Even the Bible says there's strength in numbers. Yes. That's a biblical truth. What the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4 9, <laughs> two are better than one yep. because they have a good reward for their labor. Well, if they fall, listen to this, <laughs> the one will lift up his fellow, 
But woe unto him in alone when he falleth, for he had, had not, not nothing to help him up. Listen to this. And if two, two lie together when they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a three cow like this, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen. Don't be strength in numbers. Hey, quit trying to battle yourself. Quit trying to walk and walk and battle yourself. Quit trying to try to try to do it on your own. I don't care how big of a man you are, how strong you are. I don't care how strong you are in your faith. We can't do it on so many help. Amen. Great. We can't. See, even the men in verse 17 come to realize this. They can fight each other. They knew that. You know what they thought? We've got to step up and help them. But they ain't going to be here long. Right. I know I keep bringing this up. I've been back in February. I had some men and women that loved me enough. Yeah, they stand with me in my battle and pray, and God delivered me. Had not been with that, right. I might have been shouting on the streets. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Which that would have been too bad, but look. Amen. Hmm. What I'm trying to say is there's strength in numbers. We need to pray for each other, lift each other up in prayer. Be that look. Hey, speak a kind word to them and love on them, amen. That's what it's all about. I'm not talking about this sensual stuff. I'm talking about this godly stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah. Listen, younger generation. It's time for them to join the battle. If you need this morning, if you're young, if you're a millennial or, 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 or you're older or younger, you need to step up and battle. We need to teach our children how it is to fight and stay consistent and stay faithful. And, it, and we need to realize and let them know the expectation they're going to have. There's going to be time, but they feel like they can't go on. And the devil come up and plant right in their mind. You need to realize, hey, we got to be in for the long haul. That's what God wants us to do. Yeah, amen. But let me tell you what, folks. They called David, you could verse number 17, called David the light of Israel. Look here. And Abishai the son of Zeruiah secured, suffered him and smoked the uh, Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David's word him, saying, Thou shalt not go out more out with us, that thou that, 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 that quits not in the light of Israel. He was known in the light of Israel, folks. Why? Because he showed them, he showed them who to fight. See, many times we fight the wrong souls. He showed them the enemy to fight. He showed them how to fight. He reminded them of why to fight. They say it's not a cause. We need to stay close to the warriors and the soldiers if we don't want to be a casualty. David almost become a casualty in this story, folks. But God, I love that God. Mm -hmm. David the fighter almost died at the head of the giant. But David the warrior waxed faint and was vulnerable. When you get weak, you're vulnerable, folks. <clears throat> if he had surrounded himself with other fighters, a lot of it would have been out. I guarantee you we're celebrating tomorrow the independence of, uh, of, of our, our country. 246 years of independence. I guarantee you them men if you read a story about, about this, they didn't have no army. They just get these bad football, these boys, them farmers and all, and they joined the gas and we're going to fight. Yeah. England had a great army. But then between England and the America, they had got on their side of here, did Amen. But I guarantee you they got discouraged. I guarantee there have been many a one. That have been taken off the battlefield would have died if some of their comrades had been around them and helped them out. Yeah, right. Don't let them die on the battlefield, friend. Don't let your friends and your loved ones and those who stay and go to the battle. Don't let them die on the battlefield. Be there for them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We need God. We need this church, folks. We need to get back to church. This is a great institution of God. This thing yes. is a, I know the, the, the building don't make the church. It's the people within it. I know that. We need the church. We need it. We need each other. Yes. 
Listen, look at me. There probably may be some of you right here this morning. It may even be me. I don't know. There may be a battle that's sort of bubbling on the horizon if it's to come your way. Yeah. you got to realize it. Be expected. We can't fight by ourselves. We can't fight. Oh, you remember when the Amalekites and the Amalekites and Israel were fighting? And Moses stood on top of the mountain and, and when he raised his hand, Israel prevailed on the Amalekites. But old Moses and arm got tired and he would fall. And when his arm went down, the Amalekites was overcoming the, the, uh, the Israelites. There's two men. I love Moses. Aaron and Hur come up there. They got him a rock to set on. Him. Oh, Aaron got on one side. Oh. Hur got on another. Raise your hands up. Yes. And Israel got a great victory. Yeah. <laughs> My friend, our brothers and sisters today, there's people that are going to need us to help hold our arms up in time. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. There's going to be times where they can't, they, in their own strength, they, can, they got to have somebody encourage them. Battle came again. And then another battle came. I'm going to ask you this morning. Are you battling? Are you going through something this morning? I don't know. I hope not going through. I don't know what you do at home or what's going on in your life. That's something I don't know. But I do know this. Being a Christian. You have just came from a battle or just entered the battle or you're going to face a battle. I guarantee you there's men that defended that, defended our country. Revolutionary War, I'm, I, you know what? I guarantee you they got tired. You know what? They begin to think about their people back home. No love on those that they cherish and they say it's worth it. And I'll tell you what this morning, friend. The battle of the fears at times. I mean, let me tell you something, folks. The worst thing any of you can do is, <coughs> is to just give up. Because let me tell you what, friend, you stay with God. God will honor faithfulness. Yes, he will. I remember when I was a young preacher, I got so discouraged because I didn't have a word to preach. And I knew, I knew God had in my heart the pastor, and I knew that. I pastored two churches in both of them. I remember going back to that break room down there in, in, in Cable's Road, down in the bottom of that basement. They had Piles of yarn. I'd get behind them, and them piles of yarn. I'd get the crap to cut. God, I want you to use me. Whatever it takes, I got this courage, folks. My pastor, he's in heaven. I've been gone 10 years. 10 years, in, I think September, August 1. Sweetest man I know, he'd say, Brother Ricky. He said, Hang in there, God. God, I'm going to say for us. At that time, the Brother Phil, I thought it was a cop out. The devil made me think that he didn't work the car out. But tell you what, what God done, God helped me. God, God honored yeah. your faithfulness. Yes. It may seem like you're going through the battles of your life. <laughs> the prayers you pray is to follow on dead fears. Seems like your faithfulness is not counting for nothing sometimes. See, that's the devil's mindset the devil wants you to be. I promise you, God does honor faithfulness. Yes, he does. Stay with God. Well, I'm not telling you it's going to happen overnight. And it won't be God will test your faithfulness or he'll, he'll honor it. <clears throat> God will test our faithfulness. Can I tell you what? It's worth it. Yes, it is. Let's stand on the church house. <laughs> Then they're